A short time ago, he landed at Newark Airport, heading for his New Jersey golf club, where he's expected to make his first formal remarks sometime within the hour. We are not going to take his speech live, but we will, of course, monitor them as they come in and bring you anything that is actually newsworthy. Ah, uh, yes, we will not take it because we're a uh, Democrat Party propaganda cable channel and we don't cover the news, we cover it up. That was Manderson Pooper at uh, CNN. They're all Democrats, which would be fine if they just covered the news, but they don't. Therein lies the rub. Not to complicate the discussion. What with uh, the rub and all that. President Trump um, took his private 757 down to Miami day before yesterday. Stayed overnight at one of his own clubs. There's a golf course there, a beautiful place. Motorcated to the courthouse. Could have gone in entirely underground, but decided to give him a little bit of a distant uh, photo opportunity, a photo op as he entered the building, uh, because they they crave him. They crave, and, and like the way that psycho killers crave their prey, uh, and the media, you know. And he went into the courtroom. Apparently, President Trump did not speak. He allowed his lawyers to do the uh, the talking, um, and um, he uh, his lawyers pled not guilty to the 37 Democrat Party charges that have been brought against him selectively uh, that uh, were not brought against Hillary Clinton and, and I'm going to guess will, will not be brought against Joe Biden, uh, even though, you know, classified documents here, classified documents there, Hillary Clinton destroying documents by the tens of thousands, even though they were under subpoena by the Congress. But uh, when you're a Democrat, it's a different ball of wax, isn't it? Different thing altogether. So we've uh, we've got that now. Let me get to uh, let me get to the the president uh, Trump yesterday, and the news media. We still call them the news media, don't we? Is that uh, is that a label that we can use for them? The news media, pretty extraordinary stuff. And keeping in mind, I'm going to get to this. Today is tonight is the annual congressional baseball game. The annual congressional baseball game, and um, it's the anniversary of the Democrat Party Bernie Sanders campaign volunteer by the name of James Hodgkinson shooting Congressman Steve Scalise. That was six years ago today, 2017. And um, and uh, he was shot to death by the police because it was a suicide attack, yet another suicide attack. Keep in mind also there was another suicide attack by a Democrat uh, against the police on Capitol Hill three months, almost three months after January 6th. January 6th, and, um, and uh, nobody talks about that either. That was, that's been swept under the rug. Another Democrat, he was a racist, a uh, left-wing militant, and a cop-hating killer, and that's okay because, you know, Democrats. So we get that. We got that going for us as well. Now, let's get to, uh, let's get to some of the and, the, and then the Democrat transgender targeting the kids, the nine-year-olds, and they have... They, they're indoctrinating the children in Charlottesville, Virginia, of all places, with an entirely gay alphabet. They're teaching them the alphabet all over again. This time, it's the galphabet. It's the gay alphabet. And the galphabet now being taught to nine-year-old kids in school because it's Gay Pride Month. And so they've got an entirely gay alphabet, right? Guess what A is for? All right, let's get to guess what B is for. I uh, let's all right. Let's go to the. Uh, let's get back to the. Let's go to soundbite number two. This is uh, the cable news network last night, CNN, and they had this left wing uh, radical uh, lawyer type on named Ellie Honig, and he's an extremist. And uh, then Jake Tapper, who's a a former Democrat Capitol Hill staffer. Worked for the Democrat member of Congress whose son married Chelsea Clinton. I assume he was at the wedding, you know, being a former staffer and a media actor for the Democrat Party and everything. And uh, here they are on CNN last night because President Trump, after he left the courthouse yesterday, after pleading not guilty to everything, went to a Cubano restaurant, a Cuban restaurant, to get some delicious food. And he went in to get something to eat. Been a long day and a lot going on. And he went into the uh, the Cuban restaurant where he was 
uh, treated like a conquering hero. And their applause and uh, yay, President Trump. And then he picked up everybody's meal. He paid for everybody's meal in the restaurant. And they loved him. And so CNN was very angry about this. Their panties were in a terrible wedge, uh, causing a lot of chafing. And they hate that. So this is what it sounded like on CNN. President Trump in the Cuban restaurant being treated like a hero, uh, received like a hero. Everybody always says rock star. You know, that's a rock star. That's a tired old uh, comparison, isn't it? But uh, treated like President Trump. And, and it was a great moment. But at CNN, it just made them angry. Despite whatever may be going on in that restaurant, this case isn't going to be settled legally in a cafe. It's going to be settled in the court based on the facts and law. The folks in the control room, I don't need to see any more of that. He, this, he's trying to turn this in. He's trying to turn it into a spectacle, into a campaign ad. That's enough of that. We've seen it already. Uh, let's go over again the 37 charges. Let's go to a Joe Biden campaign ad. Uh, let's get back to doing what we do, and that's uh, supporting the Democrat Party in, in all matters. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Trump stops at famous Cuban restaurant after his arrest. CNN uh, headline. See, they want to focus on the second part and not the first. And a uh, popular Cuban restaurant after pleading not guilty. <clears throat> and has a uh, great, he uh, says, food for everyone. President Trump in the Cuban restaurant. Former President Trump went straight from a Miami courthouse to a popular Cuban restaurant Tuesday effectively turning his court appearance on federal charges stemming from the handling of classified documents into a campaign stop with supporters. Well, it wasn't arranged that way. He just stopped at a restaurant and, you know, because Cuban Americans tend to be pro-American, pro-liberty, pro-freedom, anti-communist, anti-socialist, know the signs of a, uh, an authoritarian regime rising. Cuban Americans, you know, uh, they... They saw Trump and said, hey, cool, Trump is here. See, if it had been a Democrat hellhole, uh, who, you know, they, they very often end up shooting everybody because they're uh, Democrats. You know, they, we should ban guns if you're a registered Democrat. You shouldn't be allowed to own firearms. Isn't that true? If, you reg- if you've ever registered as a Democrat, and certainly if you're registered now, the Second Amendment should not apply to you. It should only apply to pro-American people and people that uh, know that there are two genders. That's a that's a stumbling block these days for these guys. So Trump arrived at Versailles restaurant. Sounds kind of French, not Cuban, doesn't it? But it's called Versailles in uh, Miami. Minutes after leaving court, he posed for photos with staff and supporters and uh, flashed a thumbs up shortly before <clears throat> pleading not guilty on 37 federal counts. They're kind of uh, uh, mixing the two. The two events here. Food for everyone, Trump shouted at one point. uh, Those in the building saying happy birthday to President Trump, who will turn 77 years old on Wednesday. That's today. Today is Flag Day, and it's President Trump's birthday. Walt Nauta, a co-defendant in Trump's document case, was also at the restaurant. Well, everybody was hungry, and everybody loves Cuban food. Cuban food is delicious, right? And, uh, and in Miami, there are a lot of great, and South Florida, a lot of great Cuban restaurants. Everybody, if you don't know Cuban food, uh, you should, because it's, uh, it's great uh, cuisine. Now, on, uh, that was on CNN. They had to get away from it as fast as possible because they said it looked like a campaign event. And God knows. Now, this is the same network that had the Trump Town Hall recently. That, that, that got their uh, panties in a bunch, too, didn't it? And that Christian Amanpour at the Columbia School of Journalism at Columbia University, uh, graduating, she gave the commencement address, and she condemned her own network for allowing Trump the airtime because they hate. They hate a lot, you know. And they riot and loot a lot. Have you noticed that? There's a lot of looting that goes on. But over on MSDNC, over on MSDNC, they had Chunk. Chunk was on. He doesn't do that. Well, he's still doing the Sunday show for now. But they gave it to a a left-wing uh, woman of color, a WOC, because Chunk is uh, a white man who may even be marginally straight, and that can be a problem at NBC Fake News. So here is uh, Chunk on MSDNC yesterday, um, and he's very upset that Cuban Americans would be anything other than left-wing radicals just like him. Now, Chunk Todd is a former Democrat Senate campaign staffer, and his wife 
has a multi-million dollar business that has taken in millions from the Bernie Sanders campaign. She's another left-wing Democrat political apparatchik and operative with, uh, I think they're based in Alexandria, Virginia. Her political uh, business just takes in millions from the Democrats. And then Chunk Todd interviews Bernie Sanders and stuff while his wife is taking in millions from the Bernie Sanders campaign and never mentions it because you know it might as well be coming from Ukraine, honestly. So here is a Chunk yesterday, very upset about President Trump also. There is a, there is a faction of South Florida, uh, uh, very conservative MAGA Hispanics who are very much rally around, sort of almost see common cause of the injustices of America with Cuba and Venezuela. And he's, he's, he's trying to wrap himself in this, uh, in, the, in the sort of the folks who claim they're exiles in the exile community. And it's a, it's a real perversion of what the exile community used to fight for. I mean, this is, this is what makes it so surreal to see it here in, in the United States. We were the safe haven for those that were escaping uh, moments like this. I, I, you know, it's just... What a bizarre moment. And I, and I think, again, it's going to take years for us to understand it. <laughs> Let me see if I can help you out here, Chunk. Because <laughs> it could take seconds. It could take seconds and not minutes. Um, the Cubans fled left-wing authoritarianism. The Democrat Party has been taken over by left-wingers who are authoritarian in their orientation. And the people that escaped the glories of socialism in Cuba recognize this, even if you don't. How about that? Didn't even take years. Yes, yeah, that didn't even that didn't take years to understand that, did it? You almost they almost see common cause, and and first of all, that was racist. The whole thing was completely racist. Chunk once again proves himself to be a racist, racist, and uh, racisty kind of uh, Democrat racist. The Democrat Party is the party of the Klan and Jim Crow of lynching, of standing in schoolhouse doors, of the soft bigotry of low expectations. They're the Democrat Party. And uh, isn't that amazing? So that was, uh, that was Chunk. So you heard CNN, and then you heard uh, uh, MSDNC with Chunk. And yeah, those damn Cubans. It's a, it, they butchered the whole refugee from socialism thing. No, no, that's not what's going on. That's once again backward. The opposite of the truth. But thanks for your efforts there, Chunk. I'm, uh, I'm sure that your dozens of viewers were enriched by the experience of listening to you misrepresent everything that's taking place everywhere in the country and in the world. Uh, Rachel Maddow, Rachel Maddow, she, uh, is she transgender? Is she, I don't know. Is she? she uh, Rachel Maddow, she's, uh, you know, Ivy League, Oxford, and wrong about everything, absolutely wrong about everything, as so many of them are, you know, those people, the lefties that go to all the best schools and end up like William Ayers and Bernadine Dorn and, and Chesa Boudin, um, you know, bomb-throwing, cop-killing terrorists who, uh, you know, got an Ivy League education out of the deal, so it's, uh, it's pretty good. Rachel Maddow was on the television last night, um, and they uh, stake out their political position. You know, before the event happens, they don't cover the news. They decide not to cover it based on their political worldviews, which are radical and extremist and the Democrat Party. Again, keeping in mind Benito Mussolini's definition of, of fascism is a merger of state and corporate power. And it's on display all day, every day. Just turn on MSDNC any hour of the day. We knew heading into this that he was planning to make these remarks. We are prepared for his pre-fundraiser remarks tonight to again be essentially a Trump campaign speech. Because of that, we do not intend to carry these remarks live. Um, as we have said before in these circumstances, there is a cost to us as a news organization to knowingly broadcast untrue things. We are here to bring you the news. It hurts our ability to do that if we live broadcast what we fully expect in advance to be a litany of lies and false accusations, no matter who says them. Like uh, Russian collusion every hour for three years and the uh, Steele dossier and Hillary can't lose and Trump can't win and the uh, 51 
intelligence officials signing on to a letter saying Hunter Biden's laptop is Russian disinformation or has all the earmarks. And uh, you guys uh, go with all these lies. You've been go you go with lies all day, every day. You have for years, and they're all from the same political perspective. Every single one of them, year after year, isn't that amazing? Yes, sir. There's more of her and more of the media and President Trump coming up this hour. And then your transgender Democrat festivals with children, because he, he. Father's Day is just around the corner. In case you're not watching your calendar, get dad what he really wants, Omaha Steaks. Perfectly aged, always tender, guaranteed delicious. I've got him at home right now myself, Father's Day experts. They've got Father's Day experts at Omaha Steaks. They've made it very easy to put a smile on the big guy's face. You know the big guy. This summer with hand-selected packages, head over to omahasteaks.com on Al Gore's amazing internet. Use the promo code PLANTY. That's me, P-L-A-N-T-E. Why is there an E? Nobody knows. Use my name at checkout and save $30 off your qualifying order. Packages can include fork tender bacon wrap filet mignons, air-chilled boneless chicken, burgers, all kinds of great stuff. And don't forget to save room for dessert because most gift packages come with four delicious caramel apple tartlets. Cook them up in the oven. They couldn't be more delicious. Getting hungry just talking about it. Go to omahasteaks.com, use the code PLANT at checkout, and get $30 off an unforgettable gift for Dad guaranteed to make his day. Because if there's one thing we know for sure, it's that dads want steaks. That's omahasteaks.com. Use the promo code PLANT at checkout. A minimum order is required. See the site for details. Yeah, the media. Now, this is before President Trump even spoke. And listen to what the media is doing. Then they started burning police cars and looting Louis Vuitton stores. I think they uh, bagged everything out of Lululemon also. That's enough of that. We've seen it already. Uh, Let's go over again the 37 charges. Hey, Chris here with some exciting news. Now you can listen to me live on the WMAL app. Doesn't matter if you're in your car, in the office, on the go. The WMAL app delivers crystal clear around-the-clock news coverage anywhere with cell service or Wi-Fi. So don't miss a second of your favorite shows. Download the WMAL app today on the Apple App Store or at Google Play Store. Well, I, um, uh, Rachel Maddow and um, uh, MSNBC and Chunk Todd and CNN and Jake Tapper, um, hardcore Democrats. Did Maddow ever work for a Democrat Party organization officially? I mean, she's one of the biggest lefties going in the in the fake media. But um, I don't know if she, like Chunk Todd, Democrat Senate campaign staffer, wife, a uh, Bernie Sanders apparatchik, millions of dollars. Campaign contributions going into the the Chunk Todd family coffers. What a corrupt city this is. I've got uh, what President Trump said coming up because, you know, we didn't ban it like CNN and MS. This is, as any school child can tell you, Stars and Stripes Forever by John Philip Sousa. Because today is Flag Day. That doesn't mean uh, gay flag day or transgender flag day. It's the American flag. American flag day comes right in the middle of, you know, the Democrat Party's sexual panic. This is their annual month-long Sexual panic. Really, it kind of goes on all year, doesn't it? Every year. Yes, it does. Happy Flag Day, America, and happy birthday, President Trump. President Trump's 77th birthday today and uh, Flag Day in the United States of America, which is the greatest country that ever was and the greatest country on earth. And the left is here to destroy your children and the country, and uh, Flag Day, and uh, everything. Capitalism, freedom, liberty, a free press, 
they destroy. The destructo machine. You know how they are. Pretty amazing. All right, uh, just I'm going to get to the phones in just a moment. Let me just uh, mop up with one more Rachel Maddow from last night because uh, President Trump was going to be speaking at his golf and country club in Bedminster, New Jersey, after flying on his 757 back to uh, New Jersey and uh, being in in, uh, Miami to go and plead not guilty to the Democrat charges and then get some food at a Cuban restaurant where he's a hero, and that really upset the media too. How could the Cuban Americans like President Trump? They and they're come on, they, and they just don't get anything. They don't follow the news. They know nothing about history. They know nothing about the United States of America except they know they're against it. That's uh, that's pretty much it. That's our news media. Dirty, rotten, um, uh, this and that. All right, uh, Rachel uh, Maddow, who's uh, talk about white privilege. Boy, she's been riding the wave of white privilege for so long, hasn't she? Uh, can I say she? Because I don't know what her pronouns are at this point. Rachel Maddow last night on MSDNC. I do not say this with any glee. I hope it is clear that this is not a glib decision. Lie. We take our responsibilities seriously. Lie. We revisit decisions lie. like this all the time. Three we lies, the four lies. That we can in real time, every time. Five lies. But tonight, our call is this. We will monitor that speech by the newly indicted former president. Monitor. We will not carry his remarks live. If he says anything newsworthy, we promise we will turn that right around and bring it back to you. Another lie. That's uh, how many lies? At least I counted six just off the top of my head with that. Just a first blush analysis of that uh, series of lies. A, uh, and we will monitor, monitor like the East German secret police, the Stasi, would monitor your phone calls. We'll, of course, monitor them as they come in and bring you anything that is actually newsworthy. They're going to do the same thing at CNN with Manderson Pooper and, uh, and with Rachel Meadow, both of whom are celebrating Pride Month, aren't they? That's because uh, LGBTQ, Q, I, A, A. And, uh, and, that's, and that's just fine. Now leave the kids alone. Can you leave the kids alone? No, they can't. That's coming up in a little bit as well. All right, let's go to the uh, telephones, Michael. Let's go to uh, Pete calling from Stafford, Virginia. Peter, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris. How are you doing? I'm great, um, Pete. Actually, this, yeah, it's my second call. I'm looking forward to seeing you in two weeks, by the way, on our on our cruise. No That's kidding. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, uh, outstanding. Yeah. yeah, well, remember, we were on the, the Alaska cruise together, so. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. well, you're the FBI. Uh, you're the FBI guy. Uh, yeah, I am, or was. Um I have, and I don't know what, what how much time we have. Uh, look, I I have about like three or four questions to kind of ask the uh, the general population here about this whole issue with this informant, uh, also known as a confidential human source, right? We refer to it as the CHS, the one that's reporting on Biden. Um, let me list these real quick, and then we can, if you don't mind, and then we can discuss them. But all right, uh, we refer to it as the CHS, our confidential human source. All right. Uh, they keep talking about how his life is being threatened, but no one has defined as to who's threatening him. Is it someone in a foreign country? Is it someone here in the U.S.? Is it the Clintons maybe threatening him? You know, uh, the second question would be uh, the FD-1023 is the source report, okay, a CHS report, which I've probably written a thousand of them, all right? Um, one thing is that that report does not identify the source, and I don't know why they keep trying to make it sound like, well, if you know, if we don't black all it, we redact all of these uh, uh, entries into the 1023, it, it's going to identify the source. It does not identify the source. Now, there may be some language in there that might lead someone to possibly identify the source, but usually you write those things very carefully so it does not lead, you know, lead someone to identify the source. Okay. Uh, question number three. Who authored the 1023? They never seem to. Is it the whistleblower who wrote the 1023 and is and is basically exposing his own writing, which is okay? Or did the whistleblower read this 1023 in a file somewhere and go, "Oh my gosh," right? Um, and the the last one, and you know, the uh, how did the how did the whistleblower even see the 1023 if he's not he or she is not the uh, the author of the 1023? Did those questions make sense? Yes. Yes, okay. they do. Yeah. And uh, let me just uh, pause uh, for a, a personal note from him because uh, Pete, now retired FBI, uh, was on our uh, sea cruise, Alaska. And, uh, and coming, we're leaving a week from this Friday to go to Barcelona 
for this year's uh, sea cruise and great stops in Spain and then uh, Morocco going into Casablanca and uh, then to uh, Portugal, stops in uh, Portugal for this year's uh, sea cruise. And uh, lots of great Americans coming along. I don't know if there's actually still time to sign up. Probably not. I don't know. Uh, But I'll look forward to uh, seeing you there. And, um, you know, doing the same same stuff we did uh, last time, shooting skeet off the back and um, whale (laughs) whale hunting and baby harp seals and and all that good stuff. We didn't really do that. Uh, But, uh, yeah, there are, you know, this... This story that they couldn't possibly, the FBI couldn't possibly release more information because then the confidential human source, his life would be in danger. And I talked about this when this first came out after the FBI briefed on Capitol Hill. Oh, we can't give you more information because the life would be in danger. Well, because Joe Biden and the Biden family are going to have the guy killed for uh, squealing on, because they'd be the most likely, you know, if the guy were killed, the number one uh, suspect would be Joe Biden, right? Yeah, that's that's I mean, that's what they're I don't know if they're inferring that or not. <laughs> you know, it's uh, that that would be my guess. Uh, yeah. sure who else would threaten the life? I mean, we don't even know who this person is. So how do we know who's going to threaten it? Right. And uh, squealing on the Biden family. And uh, who would be more upset than the Biden family if the Biden family uh, are the subjects of the whistleblower and of the confidential human source and of the information that would be detrimental? Um, now, this. This whole thing, um, does it smell good to you, This the, the way that the FBI and Chris Frey have handled this with Capitol Hill and the, the oversight committee and refusing to hand over, then redacting and handing over a heavily redacted version of an unclassified document? And, or does it look to you, I don't want to put you on the spot, does it look to you mm-hmm. like the uh, FBI and the Biden administration, the Democrat Party, are... Uh, you know, in a lubricated sleeping bag together. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand what they would have to redact in the 1023, especially it is not classified, right? Um, so first of all, the whole issue of having making someone read it in a, in a skiff is kind of silly <laughs> because that's, a skiff is set aside for, for uh, uh, classified information, usually above top secret. So, right. so I don't understand that part. I don't understand why they would be redacting sections in, in that 1023. Now, I don't know who has, on the Republican side, obviously, who, they, who has actually read the 1023 and whether it was unredacted when they read it. Um, but what is it that they would be redacting in there? It's, again, the information in there is, other, obviously, other people within the FBI have read it, probably within the DOJ have read it unredacted. Um, so what information in there, I don't understand what information in there would be, should be redacted. It's not going to identify the source. It shouldn't. I mean, that's the way these things, as I said, that's the way these things are written is so to to protect the identity of the source. There's the ways of phrasing it to do that. So the identity of the source shouldn't, unless someone can, and again, apparently there's several, I guess, is what, there's several uh, 1023s, not just one. Um, and they haven't really talked about that too much. And again, I'm just getting this from the news. I mean, I, I still had no talk to people on the inside, and I talked to all of us old retired guys, and we all have a sort of a different, you know, spin towards it. Um, I, I, you know, it's just that the hearings bother me a little bit too, just because I know that Paula Bade was always very, very well respected within the bureau, very well regarded. So I was a little disappointed in the uh, in the way the hearing went recently. I better say, <laughs> better not say much more than that, but. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm not sure what the, well, I'm not sure what's going on with this. Uh, you know, somebody's trying to protect somebody, I guess, from what I can tell. So, Better not say more um, than that. I got to tell you, you know, uh, former FBI uh, agents are are uncomfortable about uh, speaking out loud in public uh, and telling the truth because nothing gets you in trouble like the truth. Yeah, um, you know, most of us are heartbroken, Chris, about what's going on there, and I've talked to a lot of people who are on the inside and. To be honest with you, if I may say a little something, to, you know, in defense of the, the general population, I mean, there's 12,000 FBI agents, 13,000 FBI agents, and, you know, an agent in Miami, an agent in Chicago, an agent in Houston, whatever, they have nothing to do with this. It's a very small number of people that are ruining it for everybody else. Yeah. Most of the agents are like, hey, they're just working their cases, yeah. you know, and they put their head down, um, and they're like, geez, we don't know what's going on, but I just want to work my cases and put my bad guys in jail. Um, right. And so I do have a certain amount of sympathy 
to a lot of these, uh, just like I said, it's a very, very small number of people that are kind of ruining it for everybody else. Yeah. Um, you know, my generation, the, the, the baby boomer generation, you know, I mean, when I first joined the Bureau, there was most of the agents were Vietnam vets. You know, I, I missed it by like six weeks. So uh, they, we worked very, very hard over the next four decades or so to repair the, the, the reputation of the Bureau. It was, right. a, I mean, I was proud of what I did. So it's kind of hard to see what's happening now. I think things will eventually come around, I'm hoping. Um, but it's going to have to go through a painful period right now. Yeah, well, you need a lot more whistleblowers out of the FBI, and we need accountability, which is something we don't get much yeah. of in Washington, D.C. or in the United States of America yeah. when it comes to uh, people that are destroying uh, our institutions, and they are destroying yeah. our institutions, and they're doing it on behalf of the Democrat Party in every single instance and the Biden administration in particular in multiple instances. And um, it, it ought to be very disturbing for every American. If we only had a legitimate fourth estate uh, news media in the United States of America, I think we'd be a lot better off at this moment in history. But, but unfortunately, uh, one of the things that they poisoned very early on was uh, the news media, the left, and academia mm -hmm. as well. And in fact, uh, listen, Pete, I'll look forward to seeing you in uh, Barcelona yeah. Uh, I guess a week from this Saturday is uh, when yeah. we uh, marry up in person. Uh, it's going to be a great trip, and thank you for calling in. Um, saluting you. God bless America. Happy Flag Day to you. And, um, and we're going to get back to uh, President Trump and, and uh, what he had to say last night. Uh, and there was uh, plenty, plenty that he had to say. Um, and we've got, uh, we've got a bunch of it for you. The news media most corrupt institution in America, worse than the FBI, worse than John Brennan's CIA, Communist Party voting John Brennan, penitentiary face Brennan. Hey, listen, breaking news for all my fellow Americans, Biden's dangerous plan to force Americans into a digital dollar goes live in a matter of weeks, no matter what they tell you. Don't believe it. It's not something that's going to help you or me. If you don't take action today, it may be too late. The Federal Reserve will be deployed in phases with the initial launch taking place on July 1st of 2023. It's called Fed Now, and a whole lot of Americans are going to be completely surprised by this. Everything you've ever worked for is at stake. But there is a way you can legally opt out of the digital dollar before it's too late. Start by calling my friends at American Alternative Assets and get your free wealth protection guide. This guide is going to educate you on how you can protect yourself from a, a failing dollar, volatile markets, and, and get yourself into gold and silver IRAs. Give them a call today at 888, the number 4, GOLD20. Call them right now, 888-446-5360. Don't let Biden force you to use the government's new digital dollar. Call 888, the number 4, GOLD20. Call now, 888-446-5360. Individual results may vary. There's no guarantee that past performance will be indicative of future results. Seek your own legal tax investment and financial advice before opening an account. Um, yeah, yeah. That's all true. And what's Pete saying uh, uh, saying about the FBI and the twelve or thirteen thousand agents? All true, uh, but the leadership. You know, you don't need to corrupt the whole agency. You just need the, the Peter Strzok's and the Christopher Rays and the J Edgar Comey's. Not so many of them. Like the intelligence community with penitentiary face Brennan and that that gang that signed on to that that fifty one felons letter, lying to the American people and corrupting our presidential election. No big deal. Just sit yourself in front of the television because you'll have a lot of popcorn uh, to pop and watch. Today is not only Flag Day and President Trump's birthday, it's also the birthday of the United States Army. Founded on this date in 1775. You know, we, uh, we knew the... The British were going to have to be dealt with, so we started creating an army and a Marine Corps before uh, the Revolution. So saluting the United States Army on this 248th birthday. 
Uh, the Marine Corps was founded in a tavern, which is which is fun, you know, I, uh, where they were serving beer. And, uh, you know, they had rifles. What's more fun than beer and rifles? Well, I know, hard liquor and handguns, but that's, uh, you know, that's uh, another thing for another day. You're creating an army. Uh, well, we'll get to we'll get back to that later on. We've got uh, we've got President Trump. I'm looking at the clock, and I don't have time to uh, get because I uh, talk to nice people and talking to a lot of nice people today. And uh, I want to do all the President Trump audio together for you. And we've got a bunch of it from his uh, speech last night. And then we got Hillary Diane Rodham Clinton too. She is just a uh, pox on civilization, isn't she? I'm being as polite as possible. She, uh, again, face down in a pool of her own dried vomit, having to peel her face off of the kitchen floor, one of their many multi-million dollar mansions, because they're just hardworking. They're of the people, you know. That's how you get all the multi-million dollar mansions, like Joe Biden. And uh, they got they got uh, lots of money from Russia, uh, the Clintons. Or he had that $500,000 speaking engagement in Russia. Most he's ever been paid for a speech, as far as anybody knows. But uh, that's the, the, you know, the, the people. All right, let's, uh, we've got time for another phone call, and we're going to get to President Trump, Scout Center. And then we got the Galphabet, the gay alphabet, at a grammar school in Virginia because it's all about the children. And um, so we got that. And, uh, oh, and... And uh, more. We've got more because the gender confusion that the Democrats play, the nine-year-olds and the Johns Hopkins University, they've got the new, the Galphabet, uh, and then the children in Virginia. Those are the two sexual deviant moments for today's Democrat Party sexual deviance segment that's coming up. What's the matter with you people? Let's go to, uh, <laughs> let's go to Joseph calling from Austin, Texas, home of Chewies. Joseph, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris, I'm really glad that you played that Rachel Maddow clip because it's it's very revealing. She perceives herself as a religious leader, not a journalist. She is she is the arbiter of truth. She is the goddess, the platonic guardian that we must listen to, and she will decide what will be, you know, seen by the the vast unwashed? Well, their their instincts are authoritarian, uh, authoritarian uh, to their core. They're not liberals. They're the left, and it is a pseudo religion, of course. I've sweated through my suits, flop sweat through the whole rest of the show. 